Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel and thank you for checking out this video. For our tutorial today, we are going to share how to create a Revit family. In particular, we are going to create a slab basin with parameters. But before we start, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell and leave a comment down below. Thank you. First, we are going to click the File tab. Then click New, and select Family. Then we are going to browse through the template and look for the metric plumbing fixture. Right now, on this reference level view, there are two reference planes already added. We are going to add some more reference planes as our guide for the slab basin. So once we have the reference planes drawn as a basic shape of our slab basin, we are going to add some dimensions. Measure it to the center line. Then click EQ to make it automatically equal from the center line. Then add dimension to the width. Then add dimension also to the sunken part of the basin and click EQ also. Then just add the dimensions on each reference line. Then add the overall width of the slab basin. Then we are going to select the dimension and click the Create Parameters icon. On the Parameters Properties dialog, we are going to keep it as Family Parameter and as Type Parameter. Then we are going to add the name of the parameter, we call it Length. Then OK. Next, we select the Width dimension, and create parameters also. For the sunken part, we also add the overall dimension and create parameter. Let's call it basin length. The same with the sunken width, create the parameter also. Then this dimension, we call it front offset. Let's see if we need to create some more parameters.
Let's change the scale to adjust the dimension size so we can also see the layout clearly. To test out the parameters if it's working, click the family types icon. Then from the dialog box, we can see that under the dimension section, all the parameters that we have created are listed. Then we can adjust the values. Let's adjust the width to 600 millimeters. Then click apply. Notice that the dimension on the drawing is also updated. Okay, our parameters are working. Let's also adjust the other values according to how we want. Once we are happy, click OK. Let's go to the front elevation. We are going to add some reference planes to represent the bottom and the top of the basin. Then let's add the dimensions and create parameters. Let's go back to the plan view. We are ready to model the slab basin. On the Create tab, click the solid extrusion. Then use the rectangle tool and draw on the plan. Use the reference planes as a guide. Then click the lock icons. Let's go to the front elevation. We are going to adjust the level of the solid form to follow the reference plan that we set. We will also lock it to the reference plane. Let's change the display option to shaded to make it more visible. Let's test out the parameters again. Let's go back to the plan view and change the display option also. 
click the family types icon and test out the parameters also. OK, parameters are perfectly working. The next thing we will do is add the sunken part of the basin. Let's add the reference plane on this elevation. Let's add a dimension. And adjust it to 100 millimeters. Then lock the dimension on this. To create the sunken part, we are going to use the void extrusion. Use a rectangle and draw on the plan. Lock it also. Go to the elevation and adjust the void extrusion level according to the reference plane. Then lock it also. Let's go to the 3D view. Click cut geometry, then select the solid form, and then the void form. We are going to check the parameters again to see if it also works on the sunken part. Okay, it looks good. Next, we are going to add a reference plane again for the drain location. We are going to use void extrusion and use a circle to draw the drain. Go to the 3D view and extend the void.
click cut geometry and select the solid form and the void form. Let's lock the dimension of the reference plane of the drain. On the 3D view, our final checking on the parameters to make sure all the dimensions that we have set can be adjusted according to our requirement. So as you can see, all the parameters are working great according to how we want it. These are some basic ways of how to create a Revit family. You guys can try it out and practice to create Revit family. There are different types of Revit family and there are still a lot to learn in creating a Revit family. Alright, that's it for now. We hope that this tutorial has helped you guys understand on how to create a Revit family. Please comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions of a tutorial that we should do. See you again in our next video. Thank you for watching.